So the last time I sat in this seat, I was telling you about my summer listening to True Wireless IEMs from Sony, from Master and Dynamic. And these were both very, very good. But you will also remember from that video, maybe, that I had a pair of these on the table. This is a pair of wired IEMs from Campfire Audio in Portland. They are called the Polaris 2. Many people have commented on them in that True Wireless IEM video, but also these made an appearance in my AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt video. And I've been listening to these for months. And why do I keep coming back to them? Well, because they're bloody awesome is why. It's a hybrid design. There's a dynamic driver, balanced armature, highly V-shaped in their frequency response. That was a deliberate move by Ken Ball to voice them that way. He wanted to make an earphone that was great for electronic music, which I love, as well as the indie rock, rock and roll, and other stuff that I really like. So for me, these are probably my, well, not probably, definitely my go-to IEMs, even more than the, the, the Andromeda or the Atlas. In fact, I would describe these as having a sound that's a bit like the bastard child of the Atlas and the Andromeda. And they're a bit cheaper, they're about 600 bucks, but they're still more expensive than our true wireless IEMs. So where does that leave us? Well, I've spent the last month listening to some more affordable uh, wired IEMs and seeing how they stack up against the true wireless. So if we spent 300 euros on a pair of wired IEMs, got rid of the microphone, got rid of all the noise cancelling, Bluetooth, got rid of everything, how would they compare to the true wireless? The three wired IEMs you're about to see have been shot in a way that reflects their sound signature. So don't only listen to the words that I say. Look at the background, look at the colors, look at the lighting, look at the way these things are shot because that gives you more information about how they sound. This is the iBasso IT01. It's a wired IEM in this nice case. If I take it out, you can see it's got this nice cable. It's actually the cable is really nice on this thing. And one of the most important features of an IEM for me is that when I roll them up like this and put them in my pocket, that they don't tangle. And this cable is very smooth, it's very relaxed. It doesn't tangle very easily. And as you can see, I'm just pulling them out like this and they separate very nicely indeed. So this is a single dynamic driver IEM, just one driver, I believe it's coated. And the way that iBasso have voiced this, it makes for a very um, a fun listen. And I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. It is a little bit V-shaped, bass is strong, it's well textured. Um, it's definitely not muddy, but I think the standout for me for these is the is the top end. It's super airy, very detailed across the board, makes for a very wide head stage, um, and a, an extremely enjoyable listen. But the most important thing about these, the most important thing about all the, the IMs featured in this video today is that these, even at a hundred bucks, these sound way better than any true wireless IEM that I've heard. So what these are not good at is being wireless, obviously. They have a wire, there's no microphone, so you can't make telephone calls. But what you get is superb reproduction of music. This is also...
It's a crisp and fresh day today. It's bright and sunny. And that's probably how I would describe this IEM from Campfire Audio. Not so much bright, but certainly energized in the upper mid range, fairly lean on bass. And that's what I like about campfires in ear monitors is that they're all voiced differently. So this IO, this is called the IO. It's a nice color. It's a nice metal housing here. And there are two balanced armature drivers in here. And so Ken Ball has voiced these to sound very fresh. And so even though I don't listen to many string quartets, when I play something like the Chemical Brothers on these, I don't get the low end action that I get from the Polaris 2, the blue one. It's a very different sound, but what I get from this instead is a much better take, a much better look, a deeper look into the percussion and the sort of the, the squeals and the crunch sounds that the Chemical Brothers are known for above all the low bass action. And so, again, this is not a wireless IEM. You can't make a phone call with it, although I suppose I could put the Comet cable on this and have the inline mic. But these are light years ahead in terms of sound quality um, than a true wireless IEM from either Sony or Master and Dynamic. Also, these are very different in their presentation, wildly different to the iBasso. So it's, it's possible to have better than true wireless IEMs, but also very different. Um, one thing that has transformed my campfire audio experience in the last couple of years is their new cable design. So when the Andromeda first came out, it came up with a different cable to this. This is much more flexible. It doesn't tangle as easily and the loops that go around the ears aren't as firm and altogether, along with some great ear tips, I get a much better fit. And that's another thing to consider with IEMs and my experiences versus your experiences is that the fit is absolutely crucial. You need to get the exact right fit when you're using in-ear monitors like these, otherwise you're just wasting your money. So I've talked a lot about cables in this video and that's because if we're not using a true wireless earphone, by definition, the cable matters. And the cable on this Meze Ray Solo is possibly my least favorite feature of it. It tangles pretty easily. It's a bit like the old campfire earphones in some respects. It has a very tight over ear band here, so that's pretty stiff. And down below you can see already it's trying to tangle and I think using this Velcro strip is recommended. With the Velcro strip removed, you can see this is quite a nice relaxed cable. 
Um, but yeah, I don't want to labour the point, but cables matter when we're dealing with normal wired IEMs. So you can see that this is a smaller kind of, I call this sort of like a sculpted pebble, like earpiece, very solid, and it fits in the ear very snugly. Um, this is why I've got this sort of double flange tip on here. You get lots of tips with this IEM. And because it's small, for me, of all the three that we've talked about today, this is possibly the deepest fitting IEM. It goes pretty far in. Um, I don't think that's a criticism at all. In fact, it, it improves passive isolation substantially over and above the others. Although the campfire is also very good in that respect. It's just the, the shape of the eye basso. Sometimes it doesn't go in as far as I would like. Now on sound quality, these aren't as immediately showy or as fancy or as flashy as the iBasso. Neither are they as immediately tantalizing as the campfire. But the top end is much smoother and more refined than both of the, the other two. And the Ray Solo's macro dynamics is definitely the best of the three. These really pack a punch, especially down low. Uh, they give us more bass than the campfire probably on par with the iBasso, but it just feels smoother and richer. This is a more organic, natural sounding earphone for me. I think that this is probably the one I would wear for the longest of all the three, because I think it's more conducive to long-term listening. And once again, most importantly, these wired IEMs sound significantly better than the Sony or the Master and Dynamic True Wireless. So we've seen three wired IEMs sound better than two pairs of true wireless IEMs. So bringing back the wire, we lose, in this case, phone calls, microphones, but we pick up a greater purity with music reproduction. So even though we have the wire and we have no phone call capability, no microphone, um, we get better sound quality for the music we like. Now the main reason for that is because true wireless IEMs rely on Bluetooth connection and Bluetooth crunches down the music signal. It compresses it so it throws some of the signal away. It's not lossless. So, I mean, there's no such thing as a completely transparent cable here, but they're pretty close. This is more of a purist angle on portable audio. Now, obviously we need to connect these directly to the DAC and the headphone output of a portable player or a phone. So the result will vary according to which phone or portable player you use. And some of you might be going, well, John, I thought you said smartphones don't sound very good in the main, and they don't. But the saving grace here is this little piece. This is the iBasso DC02. It's a USB-C connecting DAC, three and a half mil output here. And this brings any USB-C outputting phone up to the level of an LG V-series phone. I believe it also works with an iPhone, with an adapter. So true wireless IEMs, they're great 
obviously for having no wires, but they don't sound as good as high quality wired models like these. I've covered these here today for no other reason than these manufacturers sent me their product. So I'm sure there are better earphones than these. I'm sure there are worse earphones than these, but I'm just trying to give you an example of three earphones that I have heard, that I have direct experience with, that sound better than the Sony and the Master and Dynamic True Wireless. If you've heard a decent sounding wired IEM, please let us know in the comments section below. Five elephant coffee, very nice. Um, if you're like me, you probably think that noise cancelling, active noise cancelling circuitry is good in over ears. It's not really ready yet for in ears, I don't think. Um, once it is, I think true wireless IMs will really come into their own because for me, the one thing I love about Bluetooth is it enables active noise cancellation circuits. Until then, I'm going to stick with wired. IEMs because for me they produce the most satisfying result with music. So if you like this video please give it a thumbs up down below. If you like my attitude towards earphones, headphones then please subscribe to this channel. And as always thank you so much for watching.